Hello, ActiveSage here on the Sage channel. I sleep, art, game, and eat. And today I'm showing off this large cargo carrier. It's designed to carry either just large amounts of cargo or actually even fuel. It is much larger than my previous civilian cargo ship. If you can see here, this is basically a size comparison between the old one and the new one. In fact, in lore though, this newer one is actually something I would consider to be an older style ship. It doesn't have any fancy gravity generators inside and actually the large storage containers that you see here are simply designed to just store however much stuff you can fit inside of them. The front area there is the civilian and command area, whereas the back section right here is completely dedicated to movement. On the interior of this large engine array, we have engines pointing in every which direction, and basically making all of these smaller engines that you might see here and along the line right here, but redundant and mainly just for looks. So really quickly, I'm going to show you through the top floor, which has the bridge and a few other things, as well as the access to all the cargo areas. And the main way you get into the ship is through these doors up here. Even if you're bringing cargo in and out of the ship, this is the main way that you would get inside. So here we go, run through our airlock, which has a nice little orange tint and cargo things to hold you any spaces or whatnot. And you're in here. At the very front here, we actually have our bridge. If we open this up, it looks a bit like something from Blade Runner. And in the future, I'd actually like to replace these just simple or custom models control desk with a proper control panel of some sort. We of course have our piloting thing. I'll turn on my UI so you can see the stats of the ship. It's pretty nice. It handles and accelerates pretty well, but I don't feel like showing that now. And that's about it actually for the bridge. So let's head out of here. Let's check the rooms to our left and right. These are basically the, what would be the first mate or second in command and the quarters for the captain, him or herself. And each of these rooms are basically mirror images of each other. They would have a bed in here that I don't currently have a model for and whatever other storage stuff they might like. They have their own office desk, of course. And then if we open this up, this would be their shower slash restroom and stuff. Anyway, let's now carry on down the rest of the ship. Of course, that's another airlock. I'm not going to go down there yet. Like I said, I'll save that until I'm done with the top floor. This is the main storage hallway. This is actually the only room in the entire ship that doesn't have any custom lighting at all so everything else has its own custom lighting setup but we stop here as i was going by you might have noticed we have door door blank space each two doors each set of doors lead into the same thing and that is the large cargo area on one side of the ship and you can see here it would be very easy to fill it up with fuel or any liquid up to about right here without any issue and if I was to turn my UI on it again, you can see this room does have gravity leading all the way down. Otherwise, you would come in here, turn on your jetpack, and basically position whatever car you need and attach it to a wall wherever you needed to fill this whole space up. Like I said, much simpler than the other one, therefore much less advanced. Anyway, let's carry down this way and through this door. And in here, another airlock we have. But this one leads out into uh, the inside of the engine area of the ship. You can see we actually don't have any gravity back here. And as well as having all the engines, it of course has all the reactors. And I'm currently using a bunch of small reactors because they're easier to cram into confined spaces and they form around, of course, weird shapes. Whereas large reactors currently have no benefit whatsoever. Nine of these takes up the same space as one of the other ones, but nine of these emits the same amount of power as one big one. Of course, in the future, we will have energy differences where, or not energy differences, pardon, fuel differences where when you run out of fuel in one large one, you just replace the fuel in that. When you run out of fuel in nine of these, that becomes slightly more troublesome. Anyway, we have all of our gyroscopes as well, and then of course our up and down energy drive things right here. Anyway, back into the ship now, we can show you the rest of the ship, or at least the front area of the ship and the civilian quarters basically of it. So that's really quickly, go through here, fly all the way back down, you'll see all the doors as I fly by, alrighty ho ho, oh, I thought it was there already, guess not, there we are. And so now we can actually head down these passageways here, which in the old days would have been ladders, hopefully one day we can actually turn them into elevators of some sort, so let's fly down here, and this only leads to one other floor, right here, and this is basically the start of the main civilian area, up above this was basically just the bridge and captain and second in commands area, this links to the rest of the civilian area. So to our right, we actually do have our not-so-civilian weapons locker area, where we would have whoever runs it sitting here and ready to defend this area against any boarding party and hand out weapons to other crew members willing to defend the ship. 
to our left, we have our medical area where we could check in, just ask somebody a few medical questions quickly, or come over here and there might be research being done on whatever the ship might have stumbled upon, and of course our respawning chambers, and if you're seriously hurt, you can be just stuck in one of these cryopods over here. Anyway, let's carry on to the next rooms in this ship. Down here we have what I believe are just storage areas, yes indeed. Just some simple storage. This is mirrored on the other side right over there. And then these are the elevators, or shafts, or passageways, pardon, that lead up and down the rest of the ship. So, got a big light there. Let's try to light it all up. It doesn't really work very well, though. As you can clearly see, it gets pretty dark quickly. But if we carry on down, the first floor that we're going to reach will be the recreational area. So, stop here, pop this door open, turn off. Whoa! Okay, let me get back over there. There we go. Turn off our jetpacks, and voila, we've reached the recreational floor. And you can see through these windows, both these rooms are mirrored. So you could have one set up as your cantina or food area, and the other is just simply entertainment. But they're just a large room designed for whatever you want to set up in here. So anyway, let's just be done with this. You can see it's got these nice big windows too, so you can look at the stars as the ship drifts from destination to destination. Anyway, let's carry on down to the next floor now. There we go. And this is the start of the main civilian living area. And if we were to run in here, you can see there are four doors. Each of these rooms are the same, just mirrored. So if I go into this door, you can see it's a nice big room. You would have your work desk here, or at least your desk here for your personal stuff, some storage, your bed, and a restroom block, basically for showering and using said restroom. And that's about it for this room. It's mirrored left to right, right here. And then if we were to run across the hall, it is once again mirrored over here. Pretty nice, not the best in the world, but nice high ceilings and actually a fair amount of space for just a crew member. So let's actually carry on down to the next floor and it'll be exactly the same as that floor with some very slight color differentiation on the roof where instead of having the darker metal right there, it's actually teal like everything else. But the rooms themselves are exactly the same as the previous one, so nothing really special there. So let's carry on down to the next floor now, which will actually be a bit different than this one because this is basically a surplus crew. The ship's designed to have its captain, second command, and eight crew right there, but if it needs more or it's even just transporting passengers, that's where these rooms come in. These are basically large basic rooms where you could store more stuff or if you need people and just have a little barracks or double bunk bed set up and a restroom nook, again, stuck in one of these corners. And the two rooms over there are actually one room act because these doors both lead to the same place, but the one room over there is the exact same thing as where I just was. So anyway, that's about it for the civilian areas in the ship. The only thing left is actually the crawl space around though, so I'm actually at the very bottom now of the main elevator shaft. I open this door, we come into an airlock, and it actually doesn't lead directly outside, it leads into the crawl space of this front part of the ship where you can now float about and if you need to maintenance something or whatever, you can fly around all over this place. And this is designed to be depressurized already, hence the airlocks. And so these doors just lead into outer space, so you can easily just leave the ship right there if need be. Anyway, that's about it for this ship. I hope you enjoyed seeing it, and I hope you like it. Might not be the most impressive full stop, but I think it's a decent ship. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed. Sorry for the lack of videos lately. Some stuff's been going on, nothing serious, nobody worry. And uh, hopefully I can start pumping videos out again. Anyway. Once again, thank you a bunch for watching, I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you guys next time.